friends welcome back to just biotech today we will study about the manipulation of dna and the various enzymes involved once pure samples of dna have been prepared the next step in gene cloning experiment is construction of the recombinant dna molecule to produce this recombinant molecule the vector as well as the dna to be cloned must be cut at a specific points and then joined together in a controlled manner as well as being cut and joined DNA can be shortened, lengthened, copied into RNA or into DNA molecules and modified by the addition or removal of a specific chemical groups. These manipulations provide the foundation not only for gene cloning but also for studies of DNA biochemistry, gene structure and the control of gene expression. Almost all DNA manipulative techniques make use of purified enzymes. Within the cell, these enzymes participate in essential processes such as DNA replication and transcription breakdown of foreign DNA, DNA repair and recombination between different DNA molecules. After purification from cell extracts, many of these enzymes can carry out their natural reactions under artificial conditions. Purified enzymes are therefore crucial to genetic engineering and an important industry has sprung up around their preparation, characterization and marketing. Let's look at the range of DNA manipulative enzymes. DNA manipulative enzymes can be grouped into four broad classes depending on the type of reaction that they catalyze. Nucleases are enzymes that cut, shorten or degrade nucleic acid molecule, ligases join DNA molecule together, polymerases make copies of DNA molecule and modifying enzymes remove or add chemical groups to the DNA molecule. Nucleases can be studied as they degrade DNA molecules by breaking the phosphodiester bond that link one nucleotide to another in the DNA strand. There are two different kinds of nucleases, exonucleases and endonucleases. Exonucleases remove nucleotides one at a time from the end of a molecule whereas endonucleases break internal phosphodiester bonds within the DNA. Exonucleases The main distinction between different exonucleases lies in the number of strands that are degraded when a double-stranded molecule is attacked. The enzyme called BAL31 is an example of an exonucleases that removes nucleotides from both strands of a double-stranded molecule. The greater the length of the time that BAL31 is allowed to attack on a group of DNA, the shorter the resulting DNA fragments will be, whereas E. coli exonuclease 3 degrade just one strand of a double-stranded molecule. The same criteria can be used to classify endonucleases as one endonucleases from the fungus Aspargillus oryzae only cleaves single strands whereas deoxyribonuclease 1 cuts both single and double stranded molecule. DNA 1 is non-specific in that it attacks DNA at any internal phosphodiester bond, so the end result of the prolonged DNA's action is a mixture of mononucleotides and a very short oligonucleotides. On the other hand, the special group of enzymes called restriction endonuclease cleave double-stranded DNA only at a limited number of specific recognition sites. Let's study about ligases. In the cell, the function of DNA ligase is to repair single-stranded breaks called discontinuities that arise in double-stranded DNA molecule during DNA replication. DNA ligases from most organisms can also join together two individual fragments of double-stranded DNA. The two reactions can be repair of a discontinuity, a missing phosphodiester bond in one strand of a double-stranded molecule or joining two molecules together. Let us study about polymerases. DNA polymerases are enzymes that synthesize a new strand of DNA complementary to an existing DNA or RNA template. Most polymerases can function only if the template possesses a double-stranded region that acts as a primer for initiation of polymerization. Four types of DNA polymerase are used routinely in genetic engineering. The first is DNA polymerase 1, which is usually prepared from E. coli. This enzyme attaches to a short single-stranded region in a mainly double-stranded DNA molecule and then synthesizes a completely new strand, degrading the existing strand as it proceeds. DNA polymerase 1 is therefore an example of enzyme with dual activity, DNA polymerization and degradation.
The polymerase and nucleus activities of DNA polymerase 1 are controlled by different parts of the enzyme molecule. The nucleus activities contained in the first 323 amino acids of the polypeptide, so removal of this segment leaves a modified enzyme that retains the polymerase function but is unable to degrade DNA. This modified enzyme called the clean out fragment can still synthesize a complementary DNA strand on a single stranded template but as it has no nucleus activity it cannot continue to synthesize once the neck is filled in. The tag DNA polymerase used in the polymerase chain reaction is the DNA polymerase 1 enzyme of the bacterium Thermus aquaticus. This organism lives in hot springs and many of its enzymes including the tag DNA polymerase are thermostable. This is a special feature of tag DNA polymerase that makes it suitable for PCR because if it was not thermostable, it would be inactivated when the temperature of the reaction is raised to 94 to denature. The final type of DNA polymerase that is important in genetic engineering is reverse transcriptase, an enzyme that is involved in the replication of several kinds of virus. Reverse transcriptase is unique in that it uses a template not DNA but RNA. The ability of this enzyme to synthesize a DNA strand complementary to RNA strand is central to the technique called cDNA cloning. Let us study about DNA modifying enzyme. There are new